few minutes early and I did not uh, click live by accident. Figured again is a night where I should start a few minutes early because I'm getting my finishing up my prep work right now. And for this, I'm just printing off a few potatoes. Right. There we go, because, yeah, I'm going to be making a few small dishes tonight. And let me see. Okay, good. Here we go now. Scrub these here potatoes. Potatoes. Yes, I know, I know. Boil them, mash them in a stew. Just fine with me. <clears throat> These are big taters. All right. Yeah, I'm thinking to go along with our stir fry tonight. I think I will make those oven baked potatoes. Uh, the video seems to be relatively reasonably taking off in YouTube Shorts, which is nice. And why not? Those are some nice baked potatoes. And that's why I wanted to start live so that I can at least get these potatoes ready quickly as we can. <clears throat> da, 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 da. Rub the potatoes first, and we poke, poke, poke. All right, there we go. And oh, let me see now. Should I should change this instead of. There we go. That's better. So far, so good. <clears throat> Get out of the way. And I need a fork. All right. These are big potatoes. That's all right. I was just, uh, just getting a little bit of preliminary prep work done before the live actually starts. Poking my potatoes on camera. Ha ha ha. Here's hoping I don't get in trouble with YouTube for that. So, there we go. Off to a decent start. And. Okay. Here we go. Yes, indeed. Forking potatoes. And with that, I guess it's time. Here we go, I can have a view this way. And <sighs> hi there. Welcome everybody to a special edition of Cast Iron Wednesday. It seems like there've been a lot of special editions lately. Well, it just seems to happen that some personal milestones have been reached within the last week or two. 
uh, which is nice. And I can only, well, uh, you folks here had a lot to do with it. And that's why, once again, I'm very appreciative of everybody who's been kind enough to show up on these live videos. Uh, I was checking my, uh, my uh, previous YouTube videos, and apparently I did my very first live video uh, in 2020, um, three, uh, one week ago, meaning that we are now at the three-year anniversary of doing these uh, Cast Iron Video Live Wednesdays, and somehow I haven't uh, died yet. I have gone through another apartment, <laughs> and I'm in a new home. But nonetheless, uh, we've managed to make it this far. It's been three years here on uh, Cast Iron Wednesday, and thank you so much. Thank you to everybody, and thank you, who's, as always, who's kind enough to, to show up. Cookie, 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 Rick Stumbauer. And hello, uh, Rocket Caver and Janet Bautista. Hello to New England, Vermonter, and George Lewis. And uh, hello, Wayne P. Fried chopped bacon, drain off most oil, scramble eggs in the residual, then throw in cooked rice. That sounds pretty good. Uh, yeah, exactly. We are going to be doing a stir fry tonight. So we're going to be doing something similar th to that. Yeah, I got blogged on YouTube because I said cookie. Okay, that seems odd. I'm sure YouTube is just being YouTube. Uh, but nonetheless, and hello as well to K. Clock. And Rich Qualis or Qualis and, and so many others. And thank you very much for being here um, for another, for what is, as I said, is something of a personal milestone tonight in that yesterday was the one year anniversary of my becoming a homeowner and getting this uh, new home, which I have enjoyed immensely for the past year or so for a lot of personal reasons, of course. A number of which I have not gotten in, uh, mentioned on the internet for good reason. A lot that I have mentioned on the internet because, of course, it's also personal to me. Uh, and I'm hoping that that's uh, certainly uh, given you some enjoyment over the past year or so. Especially, you know, all of this new room. I've been able to uh, set up my cast iron rack um, and spread it all out. And then, of course, there's the gas stove. <laughs> yes, indeed. So it's also like the one year anniversary of that gas stove. And that's especially why I'm doing a uh, stir fry tonight to celebrate uh, the, uh, you know, this uh, one year anniversary here in my new home. Because, you know, there are a lot of things I uh, considered making tonight. I mean, uh, I considered uh, making a steak tonight, but I did make a steak, uh, a special anniversary steak uh, just a couple of weeks ago when we hit 50,000 subscribers. And, well, <laughs> in my short videos, I've been cooking a fair number of steaks lately, haven't I? <clears throat> Celebration steaks. Well, I'm not going to get into that topic tonight. This is, uh, we're going to be talking about cooking tonight. I'll talk about those other subjects at another time. But nonetheless, there have been a lot of steaks. And so <clears throat> I decided to go for a stir fry, especially because a stir fry may be one of the absolute best things you can use a gas stove for. I mean, and I know that because I was using an electric stove for 12 years before <clears throat> I finally came to this new home and have been in, and have been enjoying the heck out of this gas stove. So, uh, that yeah, and I'm still using the thick lodge cast iron wok on this uh, gas stove too. I still have not gotten myself a thin wok yet. It's yet one of many things that I have yet to do, I'm afraid. But then again, I've really still been enjoying the uh, Lodge Walk. And in fact, even as I'm talking right now, I should start heating that walk up because we do, I do have some uh, prep work. However, poof. okay, there we go. We've got the uh, walk starting to heat up. And yes, this is the Lodge, so-called Pro-Logic cast iron walk, which I have had <clears throat> since January of uh, 2011, this was the first piece of cast iron that I actually acquired of my own choice. Um, this was part of large so-called Prologic series, which they seem to uh, do for maybe about 15 years or so, from maybe the mid-1990s to uh, maybe just a few years ago. I don't think there was any particular date when they officially canceled the uh, ProLogic series. Their so-called ProLogic series had what they called an ergonomic design, which basically means every single one of their cast iron pans were done with, with rounded 
uh, curves in every way, and there were absolutely no corners or or sharp angles on any part of any of those ProLogic pans, and that included this ProLogic cast iron wok, which I really, really enjoy. I actually like these handles here uh, because it, because it helps to you know grip this very well as it sits here on the stove top. I mean, this lock, this wok here is uh, really too heavy. It, it weighs ten pounds, or I think eleven pounds. So I can't just uh, pick it up and flip the food around the way you can with a thin wok. And so there's really no point in having a handle. And so as a result, I have very much enjoyed these. Lodge has discontinued the series, but they're still producing this uh, cast iron wok. However, now it has the standard Lodge helper handles that we see on their skillets and many other uh, pieces as well. However, and there goes my tripod again. There we go. However, before we get down to that, I've still got to finish my prep work here, which will in, which will also involve cast iron as well. Hello, uh, Rocket Caber. Uh, carbon steel woks work very well. I have a couple that I use often. And Roxana um, or Rexana M. My apartment is electric, but I cook regularly with my wood grill outside. I preheat my wok in the oven, and that's a good thing to do too. Peruvian fried rice is delicious. Oh yeah, that's right. I still have to try Peruvian fried rice. Okay, that's one thing, yet another thing I'm gonna have to dedicate myself to. However, in addition to that, I'm making a couple of other dishes to go along with this. And before I start the, uh, <clears throat> before I start that, one thing would be uh, this here, um, these and uh, these potatoes here. I figured I'd uh, use the oven as well in this wonderful gas stove and make those uh, oven baked potatoes. That uh, see, that have really been taking off in YouTube Shorts. There have been I've been getting a lot of views on those baked potatoes, and so because of that, I figured let's uh, do some baked potatoes tonight. So that means we start out once again by uh, I have already uh, scrubbed off these um, these potatoes here and dried them off as well, which means now we give them a generous coating of olive oil, and then we will give them another generous coating of kosher salt. So that's easy enough. We want simply rub them, all, rub, 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 rub. Yeah, there was always some lewd comments about the potatoes, which I don't mind. Suggestive is fine. Blatant's no, YouTube doesn't like that. Um, rubbing my hands all over these nice, big, heavy potatoes. There we go. And once we've done that, now I have to wash my hands off very quickly. So let's get this done quickly here. And then once we do that, the other thing, as I mentioned, is we give these potatoes a very generous coating of kosher salt. And I love using kosher salts because of the because of the consistency. Someone commented recently, and yeah, that's right, I had to do a comment as well about kosher salt, namely that it's not because of any religious thing that we love using kosher salt. And one of the comments on that kosher salt comment was kind enough to point out kosher salt is not really uh, there for religious purposes anyway. It's designed for the process of making foods kosher. So um, as a result, again, there's really nothing religious about it. It is just simply a type of salt, which is perfectly fine because everybody loves kosher salt. And that means, of course, you can be nice and generous with it. Um, yeah, I still remember even uh, on the very first episode of Good Eats, which I will never forget because, of, you know, Al Alton Brown, he did what else? He did steak and cast iron. But that was also when he did his first commentary about salt. And like he said, about kosher salt. Keep it with you always. And I certainly have no complaints about that. You know, because kosher salt is not expensive. You can buy one pound containers of it at, at Dollar Tree, for instance. And sometimes you can even uh, get the, uh, you know, the uh, diamond crystal uh, kosher salt. Sometimes it's on sale like at the discount section in uh, your supermarket or Wally World or wherever. So, yes, indeed. It's always a good thing to have kosher salt on you. And now that we've done that, that means we get to play with some cast iron. Uh, this Here's a large number five for the other thing I'm going to be doing. 
And in fact, let me put this to one side so that I'll have room here. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bake up some uh, roasted garlic as well in this uh, lo in this lodge number five uh, cast iron pan. This one is a 1960s to 1970s uh, lodge cast iron pan. You know, it has this very plain and blatant uh, made in USA mark. I'm told that lodge debuted this made in USA in 1969. So that was actually pretty late. And all I'm doing right now is putting more olive oil in the pan. And instead of getting my hands dirty, hey, I think I'll get out the basing brush. What a concept. And simply coat all this. And then now that we've done that, let's get out a sleeve of garlic. Yeah, these they, the garlic that comes in these little sleeves, these tiny little things of garlic here. Fortunately, now that I've done that, the other thing is let's get out a nice knife, shall we? Like this one here. In fact, here's one I just found at the flea market recently. Here's a nice forge craft uh, carbon steel knife. Uh, I'm not sure if this is like a smaller chef knife or a carving knife, but yeah, this is a nice, this is a nice one that I, uh, you know, that I, uh, cleaned up and it's got a nice edge to it too. So, come on, there we go. Means all we do is just put this in the pan. And in fact, let me try to get a little closer so you folks can see that. There we go. Oops, things are coming out. That's all right. Two. Three. And this part is not doing it. It's not staying together as well as I'd hoped, but good enough. Four. I was hoping to uh, just simply cut them into equal halves. Now I'm thinking the original plan of uh, just cutting off the tops might have been better with this uh, with this roasted garlic. So for the last one, I'll just do that. Cut off the top here. There we go. Now from here, we um, oh yeah, that's right. A little, just a little bit of salt. A little bit more salt. Why is this thing sticking? I wouldn't be surprised. There we go. I don't want too much anyway. And a little bit of cracked pepper. And finally, more olive oil. Yeah, I know those recipes for roasted garlic always say that you have to uh, roast, that you have to wrap the garlic in uh, foil. Fortunately, when you use a covered cast iron pan, you don't have to do that. This thing will braise nicely and we will have some nice roasted garlic. All we do is pop a lid on and this will go into the oven. Whereas at the same time, I'll be taking a preheated pan out of the oven. Which means I better get my gloves out. There it is. Okay, so this is going into the oven right now for roasted garlic. And out of the oven comes another large cast iron pan. Wow, this is hot. It's my redneck pan. There we go. Wow, that is hot. Oof. And for this, nice and simple. One, two, three four and five put this in the sink and there we go and now with that this goes back into the oven the oven is heated at 425 so in only about 45 minutes or so we will have some roasted potatoes uh, oven baked potatoes and some roasted garlic
And now that we've done that, let's check the comments very quickly here. Yeah, I have a cast iron garlic roaster. Yeah, I've seen those. Those are nice. Number five skillet lids aren't easy to find. No, I found mine, in fact, at the Lodge Factory Store in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Tennessee. I have extra garlic. I like to roast it when I do chicken. That's not a bad plan either. I do need to try roasted garlic. Yes, you do. Odd combination, cooking potatoes and fried rice. Well, it's like mostly because the potato recipe has become so popular on my channel lately. So I figured I'd, uh, you know, make people happy and do it. And besides, uh, I'm not going to eat all of this uh, tonight anyway. So I can always put the potatoes aside and have them tomorrow or maybe even the day after. So as much cooking, no, we said that one. Hopefully in a few months, your eyes will be all be healed up. Yes, indeed. I agree there about Papa Dan. Okay. And we have gotten this far. How do you eat your roasted garlic on toasted French bread? That's one way to do it. You can use this garlic really in any recipe that calls for garlic. There's absolutely no reason not to. And having done that, well, Okay, we're actually going to be doing two stir, stir, fried, uh, stir fries tonight. One will be fried rice, and the other will be uh, beef and broccoli. I considered combining the two, but I think they might do better if I cook them separately. Okay, so that means now it's at last. It's time to get to the oven. This, this wonderful gas stove I've been uh, saying so many good things about. And which is now, as you can see, this wok is definitely nice and hot now. Maybe if I lower it a little bit, I'm trying to get as good a view as possible for uh, you kind of folks. All right. That's pretty good. Okay. Oh, how could I forget? Forgot to get out my uh, special wok spatula. Here we are. My, I think, carbon steel or maybe just some kind of steel wok spatula that I've had for several years. And this is one of many things I found at Brimfield. Uh, this is also an excuse to uh, open a new bottle of stir fry oil, which is not Chinese, I'm afraid. You know, this has no peanut oil in it. This thing here, though, I did find on the clearance rack at Price Chopper. So it says here, 90% canola oil, 10% extra virgin olive oil. And with that, we're going to have ourselves some interesting stir fry. Oh, on top of everything else, let me put the fan on. There we go. Okay. Means now it's time to get ready. Yeah, stir frying is one of the, really, the as, as soon as I got this wok, Stir frying was one of the first things, well, for starters, how do I open this? Oh, there it goes. Stir frying is one of the first things I pretty much learned how to do when cooking in cast iron here because there is uh, there is a certain way to do it. And, and, I and I did my best to learn those lessons, and I have very much uh, enjoyed doing that. Which means the first thing we do, in fact, I think I might have even used too much oil this first time. My bad. Because the first thing we should do is uh, fry up a couple of eggs. So definitely my bad. Too much oil there. Oh, well. And away we go. I really love this uh, using a wok to scramble eggs because it doesn't take long at all. You know, it's like in, in about 30 seconds or so, you've got some nice scrambled eggs. Definitely too much oil, my bad. Oh, well. And bam, there we go. Just like that. That's the first step. And then after this, come on. Not spill it all over the place already.
Okay, that's step one. And yeah, that got nice and hot really fast. Okay, let's clean up some of this. And now comes step two, the real stir frying. Get this nice and hot again, and this is what I should have done in the first place. Oh well. Yeah, I'm still practicing. What can I say here? Uh, I'm not a candidate for LASIK surgery. Well, sorry to hear that, Papa Dan. Uh, we have a cold front that came through North Texas. It's in the 90s. Tomorrow we'll be back in the 105s. Ouch. My condolences, Turner Fowler. Um, yeah. Don't know if it's nasty or not. It was delicious. Uh, pineapple. Okay. Just uh, just uh, keeping an eye on the comments, folks, while this uh, oil heats up once again. Had an epic camping trip once in uh, Hok uh, Hokkaido, if I'm pronouncing that right. Really? Campfire garlic toast. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. Okay. Anyway, so far so good. Which means now we get to start with some uh, aromatics. Here comes our stir fry. First thing we do, got a combination here. A lot uh, chopped onions to which I've also uh, have minced garlic and minced ginger. And for once, I actually have real ginger. I always seem to be out of ginger when I do these things, but I made a point of getting some. And it, oh yeah, now definitely it's a reminder of what it's like to use real ginger in a stir fry. I can smell that, and it's a very nice smell too. There we go. This is more like what I had wanted. I want to be sure, of course, not to burn this, but it's only going to take a little time before the before this is uh, good and uh, cooked. Because from here, it's time next. Yeah, even uh, to get out the rice. These stir fries really don't take very long, even though this is nowhere near what you might get at a uh, restaurant. Flop. I mean, after all, those restaurants, the Chinese restaurants or Japanese, they of course use like rocket engines for their, uh, you know, in their kitchens. So we've got these blasting um, burners that uh, heat up these woks to, oh, good grief, several hundred degrees at least. Or I don't know, maybe it even gets close to 1,000 degrees perhaps, you know, comparable to the Italian uh, wood-fired ovens. And despite the fact that this uh, gas stove works wonderful, definitely does not get that, that hot. So as a result, this is not going to be done in three minutes, unfortunately. Nonetheless, it's still not going to take long at all, especially since this is pre-cooked rice. And that, again, is the reason why we use pre-cooked rice. You know, because the rice has been sitting in the uh, refrigerator all day. Besides the fact that it's cold, it's also uh, had a chance to, oh, I don't know, what do you, what do you call it? Congeal, I guess, develop that starch. Basically, uh, makes it better for frying. And all we really need to do is spread it out and give it that fried rice taste. Once this is good and hot, which I would say would be in a, maybe a couple to maybe a few minutes, we'll then just be able to add some oils to it. There we go. Yeah, as I mentioned, this uh, particular uh, wok shovel or chan, as I said, I do not know if this thing is vintage or not. Uh, I found it at Brimfield for five bucks. And if I remember right, I soaked it in the lye tank over the entire winter and finally took it out in the spring and cleaned it up and found a wooden handle, to, a wooden dowel to put in as a handle. And it has served well ever since. I consider this one of my very favorite kitchen utensils. 
I mean, I know people say that a chef's knife is the first thing you need to uh, get when you are stocking your kitchen, and I don't disagree with that. However, a wok shovel is it easily in the top five, possibly even the top three. Because, yeah, that's the other thing. If you have never, I mean, if you have a wok and you have never used a wok shovel, you honestly have to run, not walk, yuck, yuck, yuck. You have to run right out and get one. They're cheap. They are all kinds of brands from inexpensive to uh, ridiculously expensive. Um, and using a wok shovel is wonderful. I mean, it is shaped so well to fit into the wok that you will feel the difference. And you will never be satisfied with using a spatula in a uh, wok stir fry ever again. And for good reason. So, and this is hardly a unitasker either. I mean, yes, it's made especially for use in a wok, but guess what? It's a shovel so that you can serve and scoop out food. I highly, highly recommend the use of a chan, C H U A N. Or again, this is a wok shovel. There we go. Nice and easy stir fry. This is really the type of thing you could make even when you come home tired from work because as you can see, that didn't take long at all. Of course, the prep work was, I made sure to do the prep work before this live video started. There is that as well. <laughs> okay, the handles on that wok are perfect for, and it's scrolled up. Let's see, what is it perfect for? The handles on that walk are perfect for suspending it on the rim of a large tomato, big green egg. Really? Yeah. And it'll get to 700 degrees in no time. I've no doubt. That shovel looks traditional. I think it is a traditional sh uh, shovel. It has a, an imprint in it, uh, partially faded. Um, and it, it actually says uh, Hong Kong. And a couple of other letters that I have never been able to identify. C K L. But anyway, Hong Kong. This thing is definitely traditional and it's made in uh, China. Almost certain of that. Which is fine because, of course, you know, the best walks and uh, walk equipment come from China. I know, despite the uh, dislike people have of China and Chinese cast iron. Some of which is justified, yes. I mean, really, the Chinese invented woks, and they invented wok stir-frying. And there is absolutely nothing better in the world if you want to uh, get a, uh, ch a wok shovel or probably even a wok. Hmm. Oh, I can smell that now. So far, so good, which means it's time now to uh, throw in a little bit of seasoning. And that means we start off, of course, with some soy sauce. And you're supposed to actually put it around the sides, not in the center, so that it will run down. And yeah, I'm using dark soy sauce as well because I like it. Which gives it a nice dark color. And with that, we follow that with some a um, little bit of sesame oil. Don't need a lot. Ah, uh, yes. I'm sesame oil. Never. I will never forget. Uh, I do not like talk saying bad things about people behind their back, even if they have not been a part of my life for more than 13 years. But still, I can think of someone who uh, was, uh, she said she had a, she was, had a fatal allergy to sesame. And supposedly this could have killed her. So that's why for the longest time when I cooked anything, especially a stir fry with sesame, I would consider it a taboo stir fry. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Nonetheless, com com combination of the sesame and the soy sauce is something. And from there, I make sure to use some white pepper. I've got, got a pepper grinder 
that I just fill with white peppercorns. And yeah, anybody who has been to a Chinese restaurant, you know what white pepper is. It's not the same as black pepper. And it has its own unique flavor. And it's a nice flavor, too. Love white pepper. I mean, I grew up with black pepper, and I'm a pepperholic. There's no such thing as too much black pepper for me, but white pepper is also wonderful. Finally, after all that, we now get to add the chemical. And that chemical would be <laughs> MSG. Uh, 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 uh. MSG. Oh, no, not that. It's chemicals. Actually, you don't need to add very much. That's probably all you need to add. The amazing thing about MSG is that it's a flavor enhancer. It takes the flavor that's already in the food and kicks it up a notch. It's not really salt. It's not a salt substitute. Um, it is rather, as I said, it does a great job enhancing flavor. But there we go. And now that we've done that, um, let me see. What else do I have to add to this? Okay, where did it go? Oh, yeah, here are the eggs. The eggs go back in. Plop. Because, yeah, we are just about done at this point with our fried rice. That did not take long at all. Maybe I should have only used one egg instead. I used two eggs. Of course, again, because I used a little too much oil, those eggs definitely puffed up. No, actually, it's looking pretty good at this point. But there we go. So far, so good. And with that, I'd say we probably have ourselves a traditional, a very basic, yes, but traditional, fried rice made with jasmine rice. And what's the guy's name on YouTube that everybody always talks about? Oh, yeah, Uncle Waja, uh -huh -huh. Who, who will probably think I've done this all terrible. Why you use um, American wok? Why can't you go pick, the, pick up the wok and, and shake it? Tough. I like this wok. I've been using this wok for the past 12, yeah, 12 and a half years. Yeah, that's right, 12 and a half years. And I'm quite used to using it. And I have no intention to stop, to stop using it. All right. Check our comments again. What do we have here? Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Midnight Lacey. Yeah, exactly. My Uncle Roger said, cast iron is white people walk. Oh, yeah. He did a cast iron comment, and he I have to admit he was accurate when he said, you know, so many videos on YouTube of people seasoning cast iron walk. No, seasoning cast iron and not cooking in them. That sure seems to be the case. There are quite a few channels out there. It seems like that even though they do a lot of cast iron, it's like they don't really cook with them. Uh, fortunately, the cast iron channels we know, they do indeed have cooking. You know, Louis J. Cast Iron Cooking. The Mud Brooker does a lot of collecting, but he's done cooking videos. I believe he did some cooking last night. Cast Iron Cookware, uh, you know, Stephen Strawn. He uh, does, uh, you know, again, he does a lot of collecting, but he still does some uh, cooking videos. And our friend Bobby Joe, cooking with Bobby Joe. So, yeah. I like to think we are the exception to Uncle Roger's rule. Okay. So, yeah, I would want peas and carrots in my fried lice. Uh, well, considering that I'm going to do a beef and broccoli to go with this. That's why I, that's why I did not use the peas and carrots. If I was just doing this fried rice on its own, I would indeed put in peas and carrots. But uh, as I said, we are not done. This is only stir fry number one. And yeah, I, I do believe this turned out okay. And this certainly looks hot enough. So, always forget something. I forgot my uh, serving bowl. 
So let's get that right now. Okay. There we go. But yes, as I mentioned, that's only number part one. And which reminds me, again, I've got those other things in the oven. Um, they're probably not going to be done until like maybe about 10 minutes of nine or so. So we still have about 15 minutes left for those. You know, the potatoes and the garlic. And there we go. So far, so good. Here is our fly lice. Yeah, I know, I know. That's an old joke, yes. Hold on, somebody's here. One second, somebody's actually knocking up the door here. Hello, I'm live right now. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, go ahead, step in. Sorry, I've got a friend visiting. She is uh, just came here to use the bathroom. You know how it goes, so. Hello. Hi, say hi to my YouTube channel. Hi. And actually, you're just in time, too, if you want some fried rice. But, yeah, I love some. Okay, well then. Uh, but, yeah, obviously, bathroom first. You know how it is. Okay, what do we have here? Late to the cast arm. Nice looking wog. Well, thank you very much, yeah, to uh, Celine Star 99 Peas and carrots, good, real good. Yes, indeed. As I said, uh, this is only part one of this. That's why I did not use the peas and carrots. So as long as it isn't a process server. No, it's definitely not a process server. I'm glad to say I am not in, I have not been in that kind of trouble for at least <laughs> a year, in fact. I'll go over that part sometime. But nonetheless, actually, let me take a look in the oven right now. Um, oh, yeah, no, the... Uh, Potatoes are not yet wrinkled. When the potatoes get wrinkled, that's when we know they're done. So, yeah, the rice is trying to jump out. Yes, exactly. These little uh, extra rice bits here. That's how we know, of course, that this wok is still good and hot here, which is good because that means it's about time to get into part two. Now, for part two, I've been marinating this beef since yesterday, in fact, with a, uh, with a simple mixture of soy sauce. Uh, there's some cornstarch and some rice vinegar in here. No, actually, it's white wine vinegar. I'm out of rice vinegar, unfortunately. But I, um, but I figured I'd use uh, white wine vinegar instead. And I should probably even drain this before I put it into the, uh, put it into the wok. Now that I'm thinking of it, did not think of that. Uh, let me see. That means, let me get out my colander, in fact. I mean, I know, which is, speaking of unitaskers, uh, here we are, my colander. Get over to the sink for, uh, my tripod keeps collapsing. I've got to get out some super glue on this. There we go. And out on into the sink. And where did I just put that? I had it in my hand. Oh, here it is. All right, get a little closer. In fact, there we go. So yeah, I've been I've actually been marinating the, this uh, beef since yesterday. So I'd say it should be good and soft by now. Uh, I had wanted I'd considered doing the velveting technique, which I thought was very good, but. As I said, this thing's been marinating in vinegar since yesterday. So I would hope this thing is uh, good and tender, and it's definitely going to be good and flavorful as well. In fact, it just occurs to me right now, I think I will uh, quickly get a little bit more cornstarch and throw it in just a little bit. Especially since cornstarch is so dangerous. You know, if you spill like... A quarter teaspoon of cornstarch, suddenly your kitchen is hit by the blizzard of 2023. There we go. So let's get that to one side. And let's use our good old wok shovel. Here we are. Just put it around a little bit. There we go. This way, well, there will be less liquid when it goes into the uh, wok. So there we go. That takes care of our 
beef, which means now time to go to back to the walk. And now it's time to walk and wool. <laughs> uh, I've been doing quesadillas in my cast iron lately. Nice. Oh, yeah, this thing's definitely hot enough now. You can see it's smoking. So, time for part two. Where did I go? Yeah, that's right. So, here, anyway, this is this, well, the stir fry oil is turning out nicely. As I mentioned, this. This is not a Chinese uh, stir fry. It does not have peanut oil in it. Once again, it's got this combination of canola and extra virgin olive oil. And like I said, I got it cheap at the discount um, counter at uh, Price Chopper or discount shelf, I should say. So from here, all we have to do is heat it up a little bit. I'm waiting to see a cast iron colander. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, no, unfortunately, as tempted as I am, I'm sticking with a uh, stainless or a colander that won't rust. In fact, though, I do have a uh, steel colander, which in fact is a steaming basket. I got this uh, steaming basket at a, a Chinese restaurant store for $5, and it makes a terrific colander. So there's something to consider if you ever uh, come across one of those. I remember trick-or-treating in the snow in 1977. <laughs> okay, clock, we were off school for a week. Are we talking about the old blizzard of 19, oh, blizzard of 77? I'm thinking of the blizzard of 78, the one that uh, knocked out the entire uh, east coast of the United States. I'll never forget that. Okay, but now that we've done that, time once again. And let's get started with our, well, actually, even before we do the aromatics, we should start with the beef so that we can then reserve it. So in we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. I can definitely smell that vinegar in it. Oh, <laughs> and I like it. And then, uh, folks may know, I have been a vinegar colic for my entire life. I've got a passion for vinegar, just like I have a passion for black pepper. All right. Can't uh, just keep stirring it around too much. I've got to actually let this sear or stir fry, whichever you prefer. But we should lay it out in a thin layer. There we go. All right, so far so good. And while I'm waiting for a minute or so, let's, let's see what else we have here. Uh, I was stuck for days at a friend's house with her family. Oh yeah, we ran out of heating oil. It was the blizzard of 78 though. I, I certainly remember that. Unless maybe there was another blizzard in the Midwest perhaps in 77. Did you do anything with your yard? You could make a compost bed. Uh, so far, uh, the only thing I've done with my yard is learn how to mow the lawn, which, in fact, I have to do tomorrow night. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we have. That one is a stretch. Hmm. Okay. I love potato salad with a good vinegar tang. I don't see MSG in the ingredients in Kikoman. Well, that's why I made a point of not using Kikoman. Rather, instead, my soy sauce is the real stuff the the cheap stuff you get from again at a, at the chinese store mushroom soy sauce it says you know this stuff here is like about two dollars for this giant bottle and it, and i realize it probably has massive amounts of sodium in it but even so it is definitely a nice superior soy sauce anyway when doing, when stir frying meat, especially beef, uh, I like to judge it in that if I can cut a piece with the spatula with no difficulty, then it's done. And we may already be at that point, in fact. Of course, as I said, this thing's been marinating since yesterday, so that probably has something to do with it as well. Hello. Oh, yeah. I'm right now I'm working on part two doing a beef and broccoli. Did you want just a little bit of the fried rice or would you like beef and broccoli with it? I'll try a little fried rice, but probably beef and broccoli. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, the fried rice is uh, ready. So if you want to try a spoonful or so. Mm -hmm. right, well, thank you. All right. I realize if you have things to do, I won't keep you. Even so. Okay. Let's check this. And yeah, I'd say we're probably about done at this point. Like I said, I can cut a piece of this beef with the uh, spatula. So that means that part's done. Ugh, excuse me. I always forget something. I have a little metal bowl. Yeah. I have a little metal bowl here, especially for reserved hot meat. Shit. Yeah, you can say what you want about hot meat. Okay. Yeah, this is how my this is how my uh, live videos go. Basically, I uh, talk to the audience, do my best not to kill myself while cooking. There we are. So far, so good. This is still very hot. If you want to try a piece of the beef, but now that we've done that, uh, let's throw in a little bit more, just a bit more of the oil, and from here we get to do. Really, stir fry number two, which is the broccoli. And of course, broccoli is a hard vegetable, meaning it'll take a little while. And that's why I wanted to do the beef first. So, yeah. And what else do we have? I appreciate that you cook on a budget. Well, <laughs> I'm being realistic. <laughs> I mean, I pay for this entire thing myself and I don't have any sponsors. So, yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, some, uh, oh yeah, the baked potatoes. Good point. Let me check those baked potatoes again. Um, I think they could probably even stay in there maybe a, just a little bit longer. So I'd say things are doing pretty good. Well, I'm glad you like it. Thank you very much. And, uh, yes, I mean, obviously I'm going to have plenty of it. That's why I don't, I don't have any problem with you helping yourself to it. So, yeah, tell your neighbor, we all want to say howdy. So she should get on camera. Well, only, only if she wants to, I'm not going to force anybody. So, um, yeah. Hi neighbor. <laughs> Uh, I use leftover mashed potatoes for potato patties, but okay. Oh, oh, well, the camera right now is pointing at, at oh, over there. Yes. Okay, if, if you want. But there we go. Say hello to uh, YouTube, folks. Hi, YouTube world. Hi. My, my name's Heather. Yeah, she says her name. Well, do you really want to say your real name on the internet? Why not? Okay, yeah. <laughs> she says her name's Heather, so. Yeah. And thank you for stopping by and uh, trying my um, uh, my fried rice. Uh, as I said, if you want to hang out, feel free. If you need to go, feel free, of course. Okay. Well, in that case, we're now getting into part two. Actually, I should probably even do the broccoli before the aromatics because, like I said, broccoli is, unfortunately, it's a hard vegetable. And I should really soften this first before I throw in the aromatics. Which means it's really just a matter of uh, frying it up for a few minutes. Yeah, um, yeah. besides the broccoli, when I cut up broccoli, I make a point of using the stems. Some people just throw out the stems. I haven't had a problem with the stems. I mean, you know, you know when they're cooked, they're broccoli. So yeah, I definitely uh, use the stems as well. And boy, actually, I think I may even need to throw in a little bit more oil. It seems to take up the, uh, it seems to absorb the oil pretty fast. So granted, I don't want to drown it. So maybe just, um, there we go. Maybe just a little bit. Yeah, that should be enough. And yeah, like I said, this is how I do these uh, live videos here. I keep talking and talking because I don't want there to be any dead air. You know, silence is uh the thing that keeps that bores people so that's something that we don't want to do and while we're doing this especially on wednesdays stems are the best part cut them small and they're good my grandmother introduced me to potato patties yum oh that sounds good maybe we should do that another week as well i like raw broccoli well i am not a fan of raw broccoli myself but on the other hand i love cooked broccoli and you know broccoli of course is one of those things that kids are supposed Host to hate, and I was always different like that. Uh, I never had a problem with broccoli. 
especially when it was served, of course, with, with lots of butter. So, yeah, I mean, as long as it was soft and easily chewy, I love broccoli. I didn't have any problem with it. And besides, if anybody who has kids or remembers being a kid, then you know with broccoli, it was always playing the game of giants eating little trees. That's always what we say to, say to the kids to get them to eat their broccoli. But I have never really had a problem with broccoli. Yeah, this broccoli is definitely absorbing the oil here. I'm actually going to have to put in a little bit more when I do the aromatic. Hi, right, my grandmother introduced me. I always saw that one as well. Broccoli stir-fried in chicken fat is to die for. Ooh, that sounds tempting. Yeah, maybe I should have considered doing that. But I did want to break out that, uh, that stir-fry oil, which seems to have done a uh, pretty good job, actually. So, I guess, just like before, when, when this thing is uh, starting to soften, then I'll know it's done, and then I guess we can move on. We are not at that point yet, so I just got to keep on going. In fact, let me grab the, uh, I just thought of this, let me grab the wok lid, and then we'll steam it. Excuse me, please. Thank you very much. There we are. We'll steam the broccoli a little bit, and that should help soften it. Um, yeah, the uh, wok lid is not by Lodge. I bought this uh, shortly after I got the wok because I wanted a proper lid for it. I went online to a place called The Wok Shop, which was and maybe still is about the biggest online supplier of wok uh, woks and wok materials. And I've been using this uh, lid now for... <laughs> almost as long as I've been now uh, using the wok here. It was also from there that I learned this is how a lid is supposed to fit on a wok. It is supposed to be smaller in diameter than the wok, and it is supposed to fit on the inside and not on the rim. Um, I, guess, I, guess it, I guess it seals the edge better. So, so but uh, that's a lesson I learned and have not forgotten. I, hello, Bell's cat. My daughter has a full-blown meltdown because she wanted fresh broccoli. Well, that's good. Um, it means at least she likes broccoli. Did you ever find a number three BSR saucepan for your lid? Um, I do have, oh, a number three BSR saucepan. Uh, no, I have not found that. I do have the number two size saucepan. And that one actually has served me just fine. The number three, the three-quart saucepan is actually extremely rare. And to be absolutely honest, I'm not sure if I would really have any use for it. Largely because, among other things, I've got a uh, Wagner chicken fryer as well. So, so if I ever come across one, that would be nice. But I don't think it's something I would grab because i got to have it. Um... On the other hand, if I ever managed to find that 13-inch Red Mountain camp oven, then yeah, I'll see if I may somehow be able to afford that thing. Uh, how's the fur babies doing? Well, Miss Mobley is doing fine. I'll say that much. Right yeah, she's right outside the door, mm -hmm. says, says Heather. So one of the best meals I ever had was beef and broccoli at a Mongolian barbecue. Well, I'm not sure if this compares to that, uh, but I definitely have some steam in this, so hopefully, hopefully we're at the point now where we can continue. Oh yeah, in fact, it's also uh, charring a little bit. So I think we are about ready to continue at this point. Which means I have to throw in a little bit more oil, and then we will continue. By the way, these use these uh, these live videos here. They usually last about an hour and a half. Meaning, I'm going to be standing here talking to like about nine thirty or so. As I said, I'm not forcing you to stay, especially if you've got other things to do. But uh, but yeah, you know, as I said, please feel free to chill if that's what you'd like to do. Okay, now from here, let's go in to our aromatic onions, ginger and uh, garlic, which is pretty much the holy trinity of uh, Asian food. There we go. Definitely have aromatics going in here now. 
which means from here, all I really need to do again is get all of this until it's nice and soft. Because yeah, this is the second part of the stir fry. So we're almost done now. I like that. Let's check those, let's check those potatoes again while we're at it. And I do believe the potatoes are starting to get crinkled. So we're probably getting close to that point here. In fact, let's do this. And then very quickly move these things aside. And there goes my tripod again. I've got to get some super glue for this. Okay, that means for now, uh, where my gloves go, I put them back and out of the oven comes number one ah, ha, ha. baked potatoes oh boy is that ever hot wow and then after this uh let's get this um other trivet here Ooh, that is hot move this to the side put this where it's safe turn this around and I've got to do this. Oh, yeah, let me stir the wok while I'm at it. There we go. And then from here, the other dish. Ah, also very, very hot. There we go. Move this. And this is, oh, yeah, roasted garlic. In fact, I'm sure you folks will probably want to see a close-up of that. There we go. We've definitely got some roasted garlic here. So once we, okay, once we do that, don't want to bump into that. Now, get to the final part. And let's get our stir-fry finished, shall we? Which means now that we've gotten this far, we've got one more ingredient. Mushrooms. Love mushrooms in, in my stir fries or just about any other place. So all we really need to do is uh, maybe in a couple of minutes, once this is, once these mushrooms are softened, we will throw in the broccoli, not broccoli, the beef, and our stir fry will be done. Ah, yes. Got a nice, healthy... And in fact, right now it would be even be vegetarian because you know there's no meat in this. Although there is the residue from cooking the beef, so vegans may not want may not want to touch that for that reason. But for anybody else, here we go. Right now we've got a broccoli and mushroom stir fry, which is something I would certainly have no problem chowing down. In fact, let's throw in just a little bit more. Don't need to do a lot because, again, the color, a little bit of that soy sauce. Okay. Yeah, because I don't want to turn it all black. I mean, that's a dark soy sauce. Ooh, I can smell that, though. Mm. And it is coloring the mushrooms, which is nice. Oh, yeah, we are definitely getting the point we want to get to. Uh, Asian stir fries are definitely, you know how I like to use the term cooking magic? Because, yeah, you can get into all kinds of mystical things like like key, Q-I, key, or wok hay, the breath of the wok. Apparently, wok hay is pretty much the sensation you get of just perfectly charred and roasted stir fry and it's something that some that uh, in asia they do consider it to be mystical and that all sounds good to me but yeah this thing is definitely shrinking which means i do believe the last part is to throw in the beef there we go where's the beef mm. Mm. There's the beef. But there we go. Mix it all together. 
And this is why I've decided to do these in, in two separate stir fries. Because I think, you know, at putting it all together in the rice, maybe it may not have come out so well, but doing it in separate parts, I think this actually gave better results because we have got ourselves quite a beef and broccoli stir fry here. Let's take a closer look in fact. In fact, I should probably even, again, tripod. Probably even get out my camera and take a picture or two. Because this would make a nice photo for title photo for this video here. There we go. But yeah, not bad. As I said, this did not take five or 10 minutes the way it would at an Asian restaurant. You know, it took like maybe three quarters of an hour or so. But, oh, you all done? Oh, I guess she stepped out for a moment. But, there it is. I've turned off the heat. Of course, this wok is still blazing hot. And voila. Tell them, keep it, tell them, eat up and keep it moving, literally. Yeah, break out the plum wine. Mm, or is that just a Midwestern Chinese restaurant thing? Add Chinese cooking wine to get the charred bits melted into, into the sauce. Well, there is that. Although, yeah, I did say that we, that I had been marinating this beef in a uh, vinegar and soy sauce marinade since yesterday. So I've no doubt whatsoever that this is uh, done which means the last thing we need to do is get out a bowl. Ugh. Ugh. Throw in, throw in some of the fried rice. There we go. Here's a bowl with the fried rice. And to this, we add beef and there's a lot. Of, there we go. That's a little better. Broccoli, beef, and mushrooms. And voila. Here's our stir fry beef, broccoli, mushrooms on fried rice. All right. Are you still hungry? Did you want did you want more? Okay, good, because there we go. I'm just showing off this bowl here. And I'd say voila. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Oh. So there we go. Now so far so good. That means in, on top of all this as well, we have these um I'm okay. doing that. Okay. We have these baked potatoes as well, which also seem to turn out quite nice. Let's shrink. There we go. Shrink this down a little bit. And here are our baked potatoes with a nice salt crust on top and wrinkly skin. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I know somebody pointed out, you know, baked potatoes are a little odd with a stir fry. But as I said, I can always have these baked potatoes tomorrow or maybe even Friday. So there was certainly no problem with that. And finally, once again, the roasted garlic. And here's the nice thing about roasted garlic is that you can squeeze it. This is hot. Oh, this is hot, hot, hot. Hmm. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, roasted garlic, which among other things, of course, I can mix in with butter and it will have the world's best garlic bread. Oh, so, that has been quite an exercise, and I'm hoping a nice way to uh, celebrate one year anniversary in my home. Yes, it was yesterday, in fact, that I uh, really uh, signed the signed the paperwork, and I have been uh, live and I've been uh, living here for one year now. So things are doing good. Yeah, you can also shred the potatoes and make hash browns in the morning. Yes, you can. Hmm. I like to, I like you bringing in an independent taste tester. Yeah, that's not a bad plan. Definitely, I'm not complaining about that. 
And I appreciate honest criticism as well. If there's anything that you feel is not right or you don't like, please feel free to say so. I will not be upset because my theory is that criticism has its use because if people don't tell me what I'm doing wrong, I'm going to keep doing it wrong. So that's why I, that's why I very much appreciate it. If there's anything you feel that needs to be improved or did not turn out okay. And she says it's very good. Well, thank you so much. Put the garlic with the taters. Yes, exactly. Okay. But as I said, this is indeed our uh, celebration tonight. And thank you so much to everybody. So, yeah. Um, and what can I say? I am, as you see, I am loving the heck out of this gas stove here. <laughs> um, I spent 12 years uh, cooking on electric stoves. At, yeah, 12 and a half years going on 13, cooking on electric stoves. And while they were good, I am definitely, uh, I definitely feel this gas stove is a step up. So I enjoy the creativity and the chaos. Well, thank you so much, uh, K Clock, as well. The only thing you're doing wrong is not inviting us all over. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the problem with the internet. You know, living like anywhere from 500 to 1,000 miles away, unfortunately, makes it a little bit uh, difficult to invite everybody over, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> so I want to copy what you did exactly. Well, um, well, nothing I did here is rocket science. Um, it, you know, stir fries are so popular because they're so easy to do. I mean, I mean, it, it's, as I said, it, I learned, what I really learned is that there's a proper method for doing it, and that definitely gives us improved results. I mean, while it is easy to just simply throw everything all together in the wok at once, um, there, I mean, you saw that I made sure I decided to do the rice separate from the beef and broccoli, and I think that was a good thing. Likewise, as well, you know, searing the uh, beef first and then doing the um, doing the uh, broccoli, which again, I, I um, as I said, I'm, all I can say is I learned from experience, and I think this has given uh, better results that way. And so I am really this is just something I'm quite proud of because it's so much fun to do, and the results are so delicious, and it also costs a lot less too. Um, you know, I mean, this uh, beef was five bucks at Price Chopper yesterday, and all I did was marinate it. And then there is the uh, cost simply of the uh, broccoli and the mushrooms, and that was about it. So, um, yeah, when we win the lotto, <laughs> yes, where air dropped this whole group in the in the in my backyard. Well, that would be interesting. So, but I'm in New York. I'll just follow my nose. Silver five seventy nine. Well, thank you very much. Cook meat separately. Yes, exactly. That, as I said, I can only say again, I learned this from experience. I mean, I know this is all written down in so many websites and YouTube videos. And yes, indeed, cookbooks. Anybody remember what books are? <laughs> but I mean, really, it's from the experience more than anything else, I think. I've been a big fan of learning by doing. And that's what really makes all of this so much fun. So, And um, having the right tools for the job certainly helps which is yet another reason why I have been so fond of uh, using cast iron. As I mentioned, this wok here, I got uh, in January of 2011. Uh, I, I, I've told this story before. You've heard this story before. I was bitten by the cooking bug in December of 2010. And so for Christmas of 2010, my brother gave me an Amazon gift certificate. And that was when I decided to use that gift certificate and get this wok, this cast iron wok here. The first piece of cast iron that I had decided to get for myself. I mean, I had a couple of pans that had previously been presents, but this I decided to get for myself. And that was really when it took off and I have never looked back. In fact, this wok is a spinner. I warped this thick, heavy wok. If I put this on a flat surface, it wobbles because as I was learning to cook in cast iron, again, on an electric stove, I made the big, the big mistake that a lot of people do when first learning to cook in cast, in cast iron. 
I blasted everything at maximum heat on the uh, electric stove all the time. And so while it didn't happen instantly, it warped this wok. And so now this wok is indeed a spinner. That was one of many lessons that I've learned. And that's why I say is now I am only a fan with an electric stove. I would never, and I mean never, turn my electric uh, stove top up to more than three fourths. There's rarely any need for it either because I've since learned that uh, you just need to, yeah, about half, one half of the setting on the electric stove is generally uh, enough to do just about anything, including uh, searing steaks and stir frying. Here on the uh, gas stove, I did find tonight I had to uh, put this uh, flame up to almost the high setting um, in that this thing here, the uh, burner, the dial here is low, two, four, six, eight, and then high. And I had the uh, burner up maybe about between seven and eight, but it did a great job nonetheless. I feel like I might snatch up one of those walks. Well, uh, if you have a use for it, then I would certainly highly recommend it simply because I, there is nothing better for stir frying than a wok. Um, I mean, yes, you can do great stir fries in a cast iron skillet in a Dutch oven. A wok, of course, is a different shape and it's designed especially for stir fries. And there's, there is nothing better, nothing better if you want to do a stir fry, whether it's a thin wok or a thick wok like this one. Um, a wok is a must-have item for your kitchen. I mean, again, I know they say, you know, a cast iron skillet is the first thing to get. A chef's knife is the second thing to get. I would probably say a Dutch oven would be the third thing to get. And maybe the fourth would probably be a wok. Whether thin or thick would be your preference. But yes, a wok is a necessity. And so is a wok shovel. I talked about that earlier, too. You know, I love this wok shovel. And if you have never used a wok shovel, you need to try it. They're cheap. And even if you don't like it, you would not lose a lot of money. I very highly recommend trying a wok shovel. All right. And yeah, a warp that fits perfectly. Yes, that's also true in this case. It actually means that there's a sweet spot at the bottom of the wok. So, so in, that in this one instance, the uh, warp is not so bad. But as I said, this is indeed just a way of celebrating the one-year anniversary in my uh, home, one that I have enjoyed very much, and I hope to stay here. Well, barring any disasters, I will hopefully be here for the rest of my life. So I am uh, quite happy about that and doing my best here to make this place into a home. And peas use my wok for cooking nearly everything. Love to eat stir fry, but never did it. Well, then there's always a first time, Mark Saber. I would really best say give it a try. I'm single. The lodge 12 inches perfect for me. I have 14. Also, oh, you're talking about the woks, I guess. Yes. So yeah, this again is a celebration, as I said. Uh, and yeah, this has definitely been uh, quite a week of celebrating, as I mentioned. And in fact. I'm, I'm like, tonight is not the only night of celebrating my home. I mean, again, I signed the uh, paperwork yesterday, one year ago yesterday. But then I had to go back home and pack and then move back out here. So actually moving out here was a uh, week-long experience. And as a result, this coming Sunday, the 20th, will be the one-year anniversary of actually moving into my home. And I have, and I've been here ever since, and officially becoming a citizen of New York. But yes, so Sunday, the twentieth, I intend on doing another celebration. Then, and funny thing is, though, this weekend, as I mentioned already, I'm going to another uh, music festival thrown by uh, some some good friends of mine. I told you about this. This is an independent band, and they call themselves Rubik's Pube. Yes, <laughs> that is their name. Yeah, they are definitely a weird and outrageous band, and that's one reason why we love them. And I'm going to their uh, music festival this weekend. I'm bringing my four-gallon cauldron, and I'm cooking up a big uh, cauldron full of pastelaya. 
And then on Sunday, as I said, I'm coming home. Assuming I'm not too tired, I hope to cook a celebration steak on Sunday. This one's not going to be for political reasons. Those celebration steaks I've loved, but this one is going to be a personal celebration. And so, yeah, I've got all the rest of this week to uh, prepare for, uh, you know, making pasta laya and then to prepare for Sunday. Whew, it's going to be busy, but it is definitely a very memorable celebration. And Bell's Black Cats Rule, congratulations on the first year. Well, thank you so much. And yeah, many more. And I certainly hope so. I mean, barring any disasters, um, yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed this year here. And I hope that there will indeed be many more here. So thank you uh, very much. And uh, and um, where I uh, wish you were in my neighborhood. Well, thank you again. Um, and... Let's see. I can't believe it's been a year. Yeah. Where did the time go? Yeah. Tell me about it. It's like how fast things go. Whew. Things that have happened over the past year, some of which I can't mention on YouTube, some of which I can. There have been, unfortunately, some sad moments. I mean, as I mentioned enough times, I lost my poor cat trouble, and I'm still heartbroken about that. But Miss Mobley, on the other hand, is doing just fine. And as I said, I've done a lot of great cooking. I've had a lot of fun. Um, and all I can do is uh, keep on plugging and uh, just, uh, you know, have as many positive experiences as I can. And being in this house is definitely one of them. She rolled her eyes when she saw the large pizza pan. And then she had some pizza on it. <laughs> I checked out Butter Pad after the short, coveting the 14-inch giant, oh, the Yeti, the four, no, not the Yeti, the whatever the name of that is. Or maybe it is the Yeti for $445. Yeah, that is something, isn't it? <laughs> that is a debate that's going to be going on for quite a while as well, definitely. Maybe when I go out that way visiting, I'm hoping to see the, uh, and, uh, the antique mall by you. Well, that would be nice, too. Did you ever count all of your cast iron as you unpacked it? You know, I really have not done a count. Uh, I haven't done a real inventory be largely because I know what my collection is, but I would estimate somewhere on the order of maybe 100 pieces. And maybe I'm being conservative, but that's uh, the rough estimate of my collection. So he is uh, he's dipping in and out of his, in and out his stove. Oh, um, Okay, male cats roam and get in trouble. Yeah, that's true. Be proud and happy that he lived happy. Yeah, that much I can say, yes. So, and thank you very much for that. So I do have a lot of good memories of uh, poor, poor trouble. Okay, hello, uh, Miss Today's Live, Louis J. Castor and Cooking. Well, thank you very much for showing up, Louis. Not to worry, there's always the replay. We are just about done, yes, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, we did a uh, stir fry tonight along with some baked potatoes and roasted garlic. And as I said, this has been a lot of fun and uh, it turned out very well. And I'm quite happy with that. Picture catalog for insurance purposes. <laughs> and having said that, though, I mean, I'd say at this point, you know, we probably are getting into that time because, as I said, we've uh, managed to uh, accomplish what we did to do. And what we set out to do, and I'm very grateful as well to everybody who has been kind enough to uh, stop by for this uh, one-year anniversary. And then there's always next year, the two-year anniversary. And this Sunday, where, as I said, I'm going to be doing a uh, the other one-year anniversary of actually moving in. And until then, though, we've got all of us have a lot of uh, cooking and stuff to do because it is, of course, a work night. It's always a work night on Wednesday. So. Um, are you able to insure your cast iron? You know, I haven't even looked into it. Who knows? Uh, although, interestingly enough, I mean, my cast iron, as I found out, is not the type of thing some junkie is going to steal and hawk. It's too awkward. It's too heavy to carry. And it's not like a fence is going to know what to do with it. I mean, it's like, yeah, you got a phone for me? What the hell is this frying pan? What do you expect me to get for this? give you for this frying pan yeah no it wouldn't be worth it so <laughs> and thank you for sharing yes exactly Bell's black cat's rules well yeah it's a lot of fun sharing my day with all of you folks and and again i can only thank everybody who is kind enough to show up here because i do my best to entertain you 
But most importantly, as I said, it's a lot of fun. That's really the best thing. So thank you, everybody. And thank you to Mercy B and Pip Gorn and Kay Clock and Val's Black Cat's Wool, Cynthia Wesley. Maybe your homeowner's insurance covers it. Who knows? I might have to ask them. Uh, Meth Head Steel Rare Griswold. Well, I certainly doubt that as well, considering that you can still find Griswold at yard sales because a lot of people don't know what they are. So uh, what if you drop in, drop it on your toe and break it? Yes. And thank you, though. Thank you, Chris McGee and William Hurt and Mark Sieber and so many others. It's, I mean, as I said, this has been a lot of fun. And all we can do is just keep on cooking and have a lot of fun yourself. And we'll all just do this all over again. Because, as I say, there is always next week. And so that's why I like to end this, as, as always, with my favorite quote from 2001. And thank you for everybody, folks. See you next Wednesday.